Are you tired of spending your time and money chasing strategy after strategy only to discover what worked 10, 5, or even 2 years ago is not working now? Things shift fast in the online space, and if you're not keeping up, you're getting left behind. It's time for something different. Welcome to the Marketing, Media, and Money Podcast, where every single episode will be jam-packed with proven, profitable strategies, behind-the-scenes secrets, and what's working now resources. From industry experts and global influencers to help you scale your business, shorten your learning curve, and stand out in a crowded, noisy marketplace. And now, your host, award-winning marketing and media strategist and international speaker, Patty Farmer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Marketing, Media, and Money Podcast. I'm your host, Patty Farmer, and I'm looking forward to sharing today's industry expert with you. Let me tell you a little bit about her. So, Melanie Johnson is a 13-time number one best-selling author, a TEDx speaker, co-host of the podcast Elite Expert, and currently is the owner of Elite Online Publishing that has made over 100 authors number one bestsellers and charity auction consignments, which has raised almost 600000 for nonprofits. Melanie has been both in front of and behind the camera and has owned and operated two major market TV stations in both Houston and Dallas. I'm excited to have her here today. Thank you so much for being here with me, Melanie. Hey, thanks a lot, Patty. Thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm really excited about it. So let's just dive right in. What we want to talk about today is really how to turn your podcast into a book and how to turn your book into a podcast. And we both know that those are two very, very important things that you can do and that the smartest thing you can do as a business owner or an expert and industry leader is to build a platform of raving fans. So let's talk about how and why they should do it. So which should come first, Melanie? The book, the podcast, does it matter at all? I don't know that it really matters. A lot of times I have podcast people tell me that really the book should come first. And I like that the book comes first because you really get all of your content organized. Um, you have it all out there. And then you're using your book as a lead magnet when you start the podcast. So really, I would stay the book first. If you don't have either, let's go with the book first and then roll that into the podcast. If you have a podcast, it's easy to turn it into a book. But the advantage is, that, like I said, if you only have, if you don't have either, Let's start with the book because then you're pulling all your content together. You're telling your story. You're getting really familiar with your story. You're getting familiar with your expertise. And then it's easy to roll that into a podcast. That makes sense. But let's just say you do have your podcast. How would you use your podcast to write the book? This is easier than everybody thinks it is. So let's say you have your podcast. And what I would do is do a whole series like you have it on marketing right? We're doing it in advertising and marketing. So let's say you wanted to write it on something specific on advertising and marketing. So you would start with writing your whole outline of what you'd want your book to be and things that you'd want to be in each chapter. And then you would do a podcast on each of those things. So for each chapter, you may have, say, five podcasts for chapter one, and then the same for chapter two and so forth. So then you've got your book, you take the podcast that you've just recorded. So now the podcasts are out there you transcribe them, and then turn them into a book. Sounds easy, huh? Almost too easy. Well, it does sound easy, but what if your podcast interviews other people and it's not a podcast that is solo? Well, you just have to make sure you have permission from the people that you're interviewing that all or parts of their interview can be in the podcast. Jen and I, my business partner, we did one um, when we first started our podcast. We rolled, I think it was the first 50 episodes into a book. And we had asked permission, but somehow one of the people in there must have fallen through the cracks or she didn't know what she was agreeing to. And then she decided she did not want to be in the book and the book was already published, which can be cumbersome, but we just took her out and then republished the book and put it back up without her. So as long as you have the people's permission um, and let them know ahead of time, then you're okay. Well, this would be great marketing for them. I mean, if they're in your book, even though they may not make money from the sales of the book, we all know that you know, there are ways to make sales from books, but the reality is really that what a book does for you is in the opportunities it does for you. 
So they should be really, really happy. It's like free publicity for them. Yeah. And a matter of fact, the book that we just wrote, the podcast authorized, that's how we did that book. It came from, we did a podcast with somebody. We decided we should do a webinar together. And from the webinar, we recorded the webinar and transcribed the webinar to make it into the book. So kind of the same type of thing, right? So um, you can do podcasts. A lot of times like our podcast is going to be about 30 minutes here, but no one says we've got other people who do podcasts that last four hours. So in a four hour time period, you could have your whole book done right then. That makes a lot of sense. So I have heard you talk before about how you can position your book to attract the right clients. And we all know how critical that is. And that a lot of authors don't really get that part, right? And so they're frustrated. So what are some of the ways that people can position their book to attract the right clients? So you want to use your book as a lead magnet. And I say that where so many people get caught up in book sales. All right, I'm going to write a book about my niche, my expertise. How many books do you think I can sell? Is there a lot of competition in my niche? And I always tell our authors, you've got to stop that thinking and turn it around of, Instead of how many books can you sell, how many clients, high ticket clients can you get from your book, right? I mean, a book, you're going to get $3 in royalty, but if you sell a $10,000 client from your book, that's where the money is. That's where your attention needs to go. Who can I send my book to? How can I market my book? Can I give my book away? So, you know, having a lot of those strategies, we walk through with our clients, different strategies to use for their book and everybody's different. I mean, we've had politicians that we've worked with. So their goal is to get votes. We've had people who um, left their career and in a sales career and wanted to become a speaker and their book propelled their speaking career so they could leave their day job. We've had other people that want to get, I just got off the phone with somebody who is a builder and he's like, hey, I want to use this book as be the expert in doing FHA loans in my area to do remodeling. So, I mean, everybody has a different specific way that they want to use their book, but you've got to keep in mind that it's not about book sales. It's about using that book for credibility. And I love this story. A friend of ours had a book and someone got it and they put it on their nightstand and they never read it. And it sat on the nightstand for over a year, never opened the book. And after a year, they said, you know, I've been staring at this guy's book forever. I'm just going to call him and hire him. Now, what kind of magic is that? If you gave him a flyer, do you think that would sit on their nightstand? No way. But a book never gets thrown away. A book always has a perceived value to it. And if you don't want the book anymore, usually you give it to somebody else that it can help them. That's so true. And I think that a book does a lot of other things too. I mean, when you're pitching yourself to get on stages or on other podcasts, right? You know, for a lot of media, right? I talk a lot about how to leverage the media. I mean, really, honestly, a book is so important. And it's not just a book. It's 30 to 50,000 words that are repurposed as content. Yeah. And let's not forget about when you're making all that content. So now you've created 50,000, 30,000 words that can be used in social media, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You can reuse a lot of that stuff there. You can reuse the content in other ways. You're getting, like you say, you can get media attention. The other thing that people, a lot of people don't know about is you get an Amazon author page. I always call this the million dollar page because it's like a Facebook page, but it's only for authors when your book is on Amazon. On that page, you get to have your bio, and we're very strategic. We make sure all your social media links are there. If you're selling a product, the link to the product is there. If you're wanting to be booked on stages, your link to book you on stage is there in that bio. And you get eight videos, and you get eight photographs. So think about if you have videos of testimonials, you have videos of explaining your product or giving value, you have video of you speaking on stage or with celebrities, pictures, different things that give you extra credibility. So when someone wants to interview you or know about you, you can send them the link to the Amazon author page and it has everything they need to know about you there. Plus they can click and buy your book. But the kicker is since Amazon's SEO, which is the search engine optimization is so powerful, that page shows up on the first page of search. So Patty, if I was looking for you and you filled out your Amazon author page properly, that'll be in the top five things generally of searching for you. It's like having a Wikipedia page. Absolutely. So I have also heard you say, and I've been looking at your website, and I love it, by the way. And I've heard you say there that you can 10x your referrals in 30 days using your book. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. Well, since we're talking about podcast and book, let's use a podcast example. 
So like I'm on your podcast right now and I can say, hey, Patty, I would like, who do you think in your circle or your clients would love to have the podcast authorized book? I'd love to offer it to all of your, your list for free if they would enjoy it and help them. So now all of a sudden I've increased my list, right? And getting referrals from you, from your customers. So that's a way to 10X your referrals right there. Just by giving that book away to people that will help you, it makes you look good because now you've given them something of value and then it makes me look good because now they've gotten the information and I'm going to get referrals from them. I love that. But what if you didn't have a podcast and you just had a book? How would you do the same thing with a book? Um, well, you can be a guest on somebody else's podcast. Gotcha. Right? So you can just flip it. So it's like, that's what you mean when you say how to do it. But it's kind of like both ends of the spectrum, right? So whichever one comes first. And then if you happen to be a speaker, you can throw that in there too. And that makes a lot of sense as well. And it really is about positioning. Yeah. And then there's another, this is another fancy way that we do it, like inside way. So an ebook, a lot of times people are like, well, I can just have to give them a download of the Moby file, which is nice, but you can go on Amazon and give your ebook as a gift. So they give you links. So then you can send the link to somebody, right? And then it counts as a sale on Amazon. So you can lower your price of your book to 99 cents and send it out to somebody's whole mailing list. You can offer it on other people's newsletter or blogs that you're going to give your book away. Um, that you'll give some kind of value from your book, content value that you're going to give, and then you'll give the book away. That's another way to get leads. Those are all really, really good examples. Not everybody really understands the power of Amazon, right? They don't always get that. So if somebody has never been a guest on a podcast and they don't have a book and they're just starting, right? And they think, uh -huh. oh, I really want to do that. What are some of the things that they should do first? So let's start with the book and you're thinking, I don't know what to do, where to start. Now, I just used the phone call that I just got off of as an example. He's like, I know I want a book. I'm not sure where to begin. His expertise is uh, home remodeling. So we start with taking an inventory of what do you already have? Do you have a blog? Do you have a newsletter? And his answer was no to both of those things. I don't have either of those things. He goes, but I got this really nice like brochure that I give out. It's in a folder. We've got a checklist. We've got some graphics. We've got all this information that's in there. So we start with that. Okay, you've got all that information. So we're going to curate that. And then he says, and I do a lot of social media. I go on social media and I talk and things like that. So we're going to use that. He says, sometimes I talk to realtors and I do a lunch and learn. Gee, have you ever recorded the lunch and learn? I think I do have a recording of the lunch and learn. Great. Now we can transcribe that. So we start pulling these different pieces of what you already have that we can repurpose. So that's the first thing you wanna do is repurpose content you already have so you're not having to do double the work. Then I have this great formula that we use, we call it the 10 by 10 by three. So the 10 is the most frequently asked questions. So I'm sure you get the same questions asked in your business over and over again. So take five minutes and write down as many frequently asked questions as you can possibly think of that you get in your business all the time. Then the next 10 is, what are the should ask questions? What are those things that only you know about your business? So I'm going to use the guy in construction. So people always say, well, I don't know if I can get enough money to remodel my kitchen. You know, I don't have enough cash to do that and I can't get an equity loan. And he's, the question they should be asking is, how do I get an FHA loan to remodel my kitchen? I never even knew you could do that. So he knows exactly how to do that for you. So those are the should ask questions, the things because you're the expert in the field. There's things that only you know that they don't know. And then once you answer those questions, you give a story that explains that. So it might be a story of a customer that you had or a real life experience that you had, but it also may be a story that you heard of or read about. I equate it to kind of most of us have been to church one time or another and listened to a sermon and a minister does this so well. He gives you the scripture right? And then he starts giving you illustrations and telling you about stories, maybe from his life or what happened to him this week or from somebody else that he got a letter from. And then that's what connects you with the reader and they get the aha moments once you tell that story and explain the answer to the questions you give them that illustration. So is that what the three stands for? Three stories? Yep. Three stories for each question. I like that. So, so really, that, makes it, that actually makes it very, very easy. Sure does. 
when you do the formula, literally people have written that formula in 30 minutes. They've had all the questions. They've had the short answers written out and just like the tagline to the story that they need to remember. So once they do the 10 by 10 by three, what do they do after that? What do so they what do with it? Sure. So what you can do, we have an, uh, an app that we use called Otter, O-T-T-E-R. And you can record yourself if you're not a writer, which I always tend to go to that first because I like to talk more than to write because I tend to sit and look at a paragraph for a long period of time. Maybe I should rewrite this sentence. I could rewrite the same sentence like three or four times. But when you're talking, it just comes out and then you can re-edit it. So you get the app Otter and then just start talking all of those, the questions and the answers out and the stories out. And Otter transcribes it in real time. Now, if you're not comfortable just sitting there talking to yourself and you're more comfortable hanging out, having a glass of wine with your girlfriend or your spouse or something, you can just do it as a conversation, have them ask you the questions and you just start talking about it and record it. Then there's another way, even if you think, well, I'm not necessarily an expert. There's another friend of ours who wrote a book and um, she was going through a divorce and she just felt like the whole attorney process was atrocious for her and it was like if I could help people pick an attorney, I would do that. What are the things I should know? So she went, and she wasn't an expert, right, in picking a divorce attorney. She went and interviewed 10 divorce attorneys and got their expertise and did their interviews as her book. And then on top of that, get this, she charged each attorney to be interviewed and be in the book. So she paid for all of her publishing by doing that. That's pretty powerful. Was that app called otter.ai? Yes, it is. I love love, love that app for my own self. It's how I've literally done all my books because I like to talk, not type. So I think that makes a lot of sense. And that's a great one. And I really love that story. And not only that, but I remember when I was trying to write copy, writing copy is like my least favorite thing to do. So I finally decided that, you know what, I want to work in my brilliance and hire other people to work in theirs. So I started interviewing copywriters. Now, what was happening for me, though, was that they were sending me these like 20 page you know, questionnaires that they wanted me to fill out. And I was thinking to myself, if I could fill out this 20 page questionnaire, I wouldn't need to hire you to do my copy. I would know the <laughs> answers, right? So yeah. there was this one girl that I really related with and I pretty much changed it up. And I said, listen, here's what I need. I need you to interview me, ask me questions. And then, you know, that's how you should be able to get your copy. And she's like, okay. So we set up this time. She's like, okay, Patty, let's just get to know each other a little bit. And we were social media friends. And so we literally were on the phone for like 15 or 20 minutes. And I said, okay, I feel really, really comfortable now. You can go ahead and, you know, and start asking me the questions. And she says, I already got six pages of notes or I don't need to ask you anything. I got it. She sent over the copy and she nailed it. So, you know, a lot of times you think you have to do everything yourself, but I think this 10 by 10 by three and having that conversation really can do a lot of things. So I think it's really important to realize that even if there's a way that you don't think you can do something, there are many, many ways to do things just like I have a bad back, a bad lower back. And when I hired a trainer, I just said, listen, I have a bad lower back. You're going to have to come up with other ways. And she says, there's many ways for, there, for me to give you exercises to work every muscle of your body and you don't have to do everything the same way. So I think that is kind of really important here too. Don't worry about if you can't do it one way because hire an expert and they'll help you to come up with a way that will work for you. So I think that's pretty much falls back to my work in your brilliance and hire other people to work in theirs, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's always more than one way to accomplish your goal. I would say it's like a Rubik's cube. You got to just keep turning it around till you find the right formula that works for you. Perfect. So here's one of the things that I always like to ask, which is, you know, a lot of times we interview people and they share with us things that we can do, should do, what works, right? But I always think that I learn and I always like to know what are the mistakes, you know, what are the myths or the things that we need to make sure that we shouldn't do because learning what not to do is just as important as knowing what to do. So what are a few common myths that people have around this topic? So I think the important thing is picking a publisher because I've had several people come to us and they've really had a bad experience. So make sure you ask the right questions. We even have a book on it, The Seven Costly Mistakes When Choosing a Publisher. It's just really important that you, these are the things that you get 100% of your royalties, right? 
You have complete control of the content of your book. You get a file afterwards with your cover files, your formatted book. Authors have come to us, we call it the publishing handcuffs, that they don't have their final files. They want to do a new edition or do something and they can't. They don't have access to their book, right? You want to make sure that your cover with them is collaborative, that you have input in the cover, that you're getting 100% of the royalties. I think I said that already that they do a great job on your Amazon author page, that you make, they do a promotion for you, that your number one best-selling author is really important. And they rebrand you as an author on social media. So they give you, we always say you want to be kicked on if a field, uh, a football analogy should be that they're going to hit you, kick the ball, and you're going to run and make a touchdown on the first play, right? That's where you want your book to be. You don't want to end up on the five-yard line and fight your way all the way up there and trying to make your book a success. You want to have a successful launch. You want to have complete control of your book and make it a number one bestseller. Let everybody know that it's important and then stay in that, you know, 10 yard line to the goal all the time. I love that. So Melanie, how can my audience connect with you? They can find us at our website, eliteonlinepublishing.com, eliteonlinepublishing.com. And we have a podcast as as well, um, Elite Expert Insider. Thank you so much. And I have to tell you, this is the portion of the show I like to call hashtag open mic where we turn the mic over to our guests and invite them to share with the audience their number one marketing media and money strategy that's working now. So this is a great one if you have a book. So let's say you've been trying to get into that CEO that has the biggest you know, budget for your services, they're a big client and you just can't get past the gatekeeper. You know, you can't get an email through. There's no answer. You can't get a phone call through. They, you're just, you're getting blocked every way you turn around. So here is a great strategy. What you do is you send your book. You send it as a gift. You can send it gift wrapped even right from Amazon. And you know a gatekeeper is not going to open an Amazon package. It's going to go right on that CEO's desk. The CEO is going to open the book and you can have a note in there that says, This is a book that I thought would be valuable to you. Check out page 42. There's something in here that'll change your business and increase your revenue. Would love to meet with you. And here is a link to a personal video that I made for you. Now, you know, he's going to turn to page 42 because curiosity is going to get him. You've gotten right on his desk, right in front of him. He's holding your book in his hand. You know, he's turning to page 42, uh, maybe even a specific paragraph that you have there. And he may be curious enough after that to look at the link in the video where you can send him a private message of how you can work with him and help his company. So that's one of our key strategies. And if you want to 10X that strategy, we tell people, if you really want to make an impact, let's say he has 100 employees, you send every single one of the employees that book on the same day. Do you think they'll be talking about you at that office if 100 people have your book in their hands, including the CEO? That's powerful. I love that. So Melanie, thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you being so generous in sharing your brilliance. Those were some really great tips and really good strategies. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Patty. Really appreciate it. Everybody have a super day. Thank you everyone for joining us on the Marketing Media Money Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, and review the podcast on your favorite listening platform. Make sure to check out our sister publication, The Marketing Media and Money Magazine at www.marketingmediamoney.com and grab your free lifetime subscription. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a phenomenal day. Remember, if your day isn't phenomenal, you have the power to change it. Thank you for joining us today on The Marketing Media and Money Podcast. To shorten your learning curve even more, make sure to grab your free copy of the Marketing Media and Money magazine at www.marketingmediamoney.com. I promise your business will thank you.